In forest management, fire experts use a technique called controlled burns, where they intentionally set small manageable fires in certain areas. The idea is that by allowing a smaller fire to burn in a controlled environment, it will clear out the most flammable materials that could otherwise fuel a much larger and more dangerous wildfire in the future. Fire managers essentially let something bad happen, a fire, under controlled conditions, so they can prevent an even worse disaster. By deliberately allowing things to get temporarily worse, they hope to avoid the catastrophic damage that could result from an unplanned and uncontrolled wildfire. Now, thinking about monetary policy, isn't that the exact same job description of the Federal Reserve? I'm Philip Peterson, Chief Investment Strategist at IG Wealth Management. Join me each week as we discuss the trends dominating the investment landscape. It's the week of September 9th, so listen on as we navigate the living market. Given the recent equity market volatility, there are some market observers out there who are expecting the Fed to come to the rescue with a 50 basis point cut next week. To that I say, be careful what you wish for. It seems easy to believe that the Fed wants strong equity markets. It has been almost 30 years since former Federal Reserve Chair Alan Greenspan characterized the movement in the S&P 500 index as irrational exuberance. This was all the way back in 1996. And since then, it appears prior and perhaps current Fed officials welcome strong equity markets for their contributions to a positive wealth effect. After all, former Fed Chair Ben Bernanke said as much in his 2010 op-ed regarding Operation Twist that, quote, higher stock prices will boost consumer wealth and help increase confidence, which can also spur spending. Increased spending will lead to higher incomes and profits that, in a virtuous cycle, will further support economic expansion. End quote. So, as the economic data continued to come in a bit softer than hoped, in particular Friday's U.S. jobs report, many are suggesting equity market volatility will bring about a larger FOMC cut in September's meeting. But would that send the right message? And would it have the desired effect? To this end, I'm not so sure. Having been so hesitant to cut up to now and then putting the first cut at 50 basis points might signal to the market that the Fed is worried about greater economic stress starting to take hold in the United States, whereas a 25 basis point cut would be the right start to a continued easing process through 2025. The path to lower rates will be very different than the path to higher rates, the Fed needed to raise rates with a bazooka shot, or many as it turned out, to catch up to the much higher levels of inflation. And remember, we were starting at zero all the way back in 2021. Today, we're starting at 5.5%. We're not going back to zero, nowhere near in fact, unless the US economy is headed towards a recession. Now, there is a decent risk of this, but it is not our base case yet. We're seeing softness, but not outright recessionary conditions. Now, the FOMC is likely to end up at 2.75 to 3% for its terminal rate, which would be reached, we believe, by the end of 2025. But anything greater than that might be sending the wrong signal. Equity volatility, meanwhile, is healthy and brings expectations back in check. It's not the Fed's job to give the market a soother. The Fed will cut, but let's keep our expectations firmly rooted in reality. I'm Philip Peterson, and you've been listening to Living Market Podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to rate it or share it with colleagues and friends. It will help other like-minded individuals find us. Thanks for listening. The content of this podcast, including facts, views, opinions, and recommendations, is not to be used or construed as investment advice and is not an offer or an invitation to buy or sell any security. The content of this podcast should not be relied upon for any purpose, and IG Wealth Management is not responsible for any reliance upon it. This podcast includes forward-looking information that reflects our current expectations or forecasts of future events. Forward-looking information is subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that could cause actual results to differ materially from expressed herein. Our views are subject to change based on market conditions. Commissions, fees, and expenses may be associated with mutual fund investments. Read the prospectus before investing. Mutual funds are not guaranteed, values change frequently, and past performance may not be repeated.